So, I have been trying to port Emutos to my Alpha Smart Dana portable laptop thingamajig. What I was doing last week was trying to get the SD card interface to work. Uh, it talks to two different SD cards via SPI, and this ought to provide a pretty convenient and fast way of getting data on and off the device. Effectively, you have two removable hard disks, which would be great. However, I will be blowed if I can make the damn thing work. Anyway, since last time I did a bit of picking away at it offline, and I discovered a number of rather interesting things. The first one of which is that I was getting the transfer size field wrong. The transfer size field indicates how many bits to transfer in each SPI transaction. And this should be a byte, so 8 bits. And I misread the lookup table here. The lookup table is actually, the value in the register is the number of bits minus 1. So this should have been a 7 and not an 8. Having an 8 present meant that it would read 16-bit values from the TX register and send the bottom uh, 9 bits of them, which would basically turn all my data into garbage. With this 7 in place, I can now see like actual bytes show up on the... Uh, logic analyzer. And that brings me to the second interesting logic interesting thing I discovered, which is that the pins and the SD card interface are devastatingly fragile. And by plugging the SD card uh, by plugging the logic analyzer into them, I actually bent some of them. And as a result the, the slot is not working very well. I've attempted to bend them back again, but I will have to pause periodically to make sure that they're all still making contact. So uh, I've had to use a different hookup strategy and I only have two available data lines that I can connect up which, I, which doesn't involve connecting to the SD card pins. So here they are, currently connected to S-Clock and Chip Select. The third interesting thing is that if I go over here to Ghidra I have managed to figure out how to get it to, uh, let me just try and find the relevant bit of code. I wanted hardware SBI open, I believe. This one. Uh, no, it's not that. I wanted SBI bus awake. Yeah, here it is. So there were these trap instructions periodically. Here was one. There was a trap followed by two bytes, which was the Palmer system call, or rather the Palmer system call number. I figured out how to tell Ghidra to patch the machine code to turn that into a knob, because previously the disassembly was hitting the invalid instruction here and just dying. So this enables it to actually decompile the entire function which shows a rather more complicated SPI init sequence than I was originally expecting. So that gives us something we could try. Uh, I also found a table of uh, system call numbers, so I know what those traps are now doing. So this one here is actually pausing for hex 28 somethings. And of course, if all else fails, we can go and look at the Linux source code, which should be doing something like this. And if that fails, we can always disable the SPI interface completely and bit bang it using GPIOs. Which shouldn't actually be too slow on this machine. Yes. Anyway, let's have a bit of a look at what's going on. Now, This code is the, what I think is supposed to be waking up the SPI bus when there's been a power down. So it should put the state back the way it was. 
I'm a little bit dubious because if we follow the call graph, uh, that wasn't the one we were looking for. Uh, this one. Okay, this is not it, but I did find a place that suggested that SPI wake was being called when the system's powering down, which was odd. But I do know that the power line is uh, energized and that was done using this code as far as I can tell and in fact I'll just take a moment to double check that the power line to the SD card is actually energized. Yes it is energized so this stuff is working and if we go over here we can see uh, in fact, the decompiler is doing a substantially terrible job of figuring out what all these volatile registers are doing. So, you know, these variables here do not actually exist. It's failing to translate these ands and ors. So, maybe I should be doing that rather than using uh, C. Uh, that's just another thing to try. So here is the power on code and immediately preceding it, it fiddled with P port J, which is, which controls the assignment of the, uh, the SBI pins. Then it decided which device you, I was enabling or disabling. So, for device zero, it fiddles with the port J pins again. Then it fiddles with the port D pins, which I believe is to do with SPIO interrupts, so I can ignore them, I hope. And then it powers on. But then, down here, it does more stuff. Now, uh, this piece of code, which it's failed to decompile completely, is actually uh, it writes an FF. Let's put that into X. It writes an FF to the transmit register. It then starts an exchange. It waits for the exchange to complete, and it reads a byte back. So what it's done is it's written a uh, a dummy value in order to get a valid value back. It's reading a byte from the SPI device. So why is it doing it there? And it's always doing it uh, yes, yeah, so sorry, it is doing it's doing it to the currently selected SPI device because we have two drives multiplexed onto a single SPI interface here. Uh, but it does all this stuff, including fiddling with all the pins again and doing stuff with uh, the SPI control registers. Then it fiddles with port J again. And then, guess what? It does even more fiddling with port J. It's not setting the, bit, the pins to a particular state. It keeps adjusting them. So I think this is doing some rather more complex initialization. Uh, this let me see. Uh, this seems to think something is in D3. Oh yeah, it's the old value of SPI comp one. So this piece of code is returning whatever this is returning. So that's D naught as a word. So let's just teach this about yeah D naught. 
Yeah. See, now it knows what it's doing. It's just reading a value from the Rx register. Uh, we also want to teach this if that, that it's a word. So why hasn't it come up with something? Oh yeah, the uh, the decompiler is confused by this loop here. It thinks that SBI cont one here is a normal variable. So obviously, since there is no code that modifies this, this is going to loop forever. Now we can actually work around that. If we go to the memory map, I can tell it that the registers are all volatile. And that does now do the right thing, but it produces this garbage decompilation, which while it does seem to be more or less valid, like uh, this or with SPI cont one is actually producing these four instructions, a read, a write, and then two reads again, which may actually be technically what the CP was doing, but that's not helping me much. But at least you can see that it is correctly figured out that this function is returning whatever that returns. But let me just put that back. So if we back up to here, this seems to be discarding the result of this. So it's done a it's done a dummy read of a single byte. Why? I don't know. So this is a delay. Okay, actually let's just put that aside for a bit and let's try going through this. So uh, this is clearing the bottom three bits of the pull-up register. So disabling the pull-up registers of these three bits. So, um, so fuzzy spy clock one uh, so that adds a comment. Uh, PJ Deer set to the direction and this is setting them to be inputs. Uh, PJ cell is setting the bottom three bits. So this is setting them to be dedicated functions. Okay. So we are interested in device zero, so it's taking this code branch. So we're now down here at PGPU and again. So this is clearing the top bit. This is setting CS setting the CS bit to zero which is an input. CS is not an input. This is uh, 
uh, setting the CS bit to the dedicated to the SPI interface. So that will it's now mapped that pin to the internal uh, chip select line generation, which is interesting. Okay, I don't care about PD. I hope I don't care about PD. Uh, so these are all port D. So this is actually s enabling the chip select line, except the chip select line is set to be the SPI interface. So that should do nothing. But it's an input. But it's the SPI interface. I'm confused. Dedicated function pins are connected. No, 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 I've got that wrong. Uh, one is the I.O. Yeah, that's setting it. So this is actually setting that to a GPIO. Right. That makes much more sense. So this is then setting the CS bit. And then this is the power on sequence that we know works. Interesting. All right, well, this is the other device, which you don't care about. So we are down here. Well, first it's doing some stuff with PF. Then it's doing some stuff with PJ. So I think that this is the equivalent code for both things. So anyway, let's go here. Oh yeah, and Uh, yes, so that is setting these also to GPIO. Right, so we are now here. So we set the bottom three pins to uh, 101. So this is going to enable uh, set because it's shorter. Uh, Mozzie and SPI clock one. Uh, that was the wrong kind of comment. Actually, you know what? With this narrow uh, window, that will actually do fine. So this one, you set the direction. To output. PJ cell, we are again setting the select bit. which is one to the GPIOs. One to GPIO. I need to remember to turn my multimeter off. Uh, convert to Okay, uh, A is 1010, so that is clearing the UN bits for Mozzie and SPI clock one. Uh, UN is, pull up, pull up is, right, disable, pull ups on Mozzie, SPI clock one.
and then we do it again disable pull ups on d is 1101 so that is disabling the pull ups on miso So in fact, these could be combined, which is odd. So this is clearing the direction bit on MISO, which uh, sets it to an input. And then we are setting the GPIO bit for MISO. So what we've done in a very long-winded way is we've set all three pins to GPIOs with no pull-ups, as far as I can tell. Okay, what's next? Well, uh, we read the SPI control register. Uh, we clear these bits E O O F E is one 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 O. So that's cleared out the data rate and F is the bit count at the bottom. Then 630 is setting uh, 6 is 1, 1, 0, 3 is 0, 0, 1, 1. So that is enabling it, setting this mysterious bit 10 that is not documented. and setting the phase bits and then we write it back to the control register so SPI SPC I'm looking at the second SPI control register. What's this one? That's more like it. So that is setting master mode. Okay, SPC one is Sample period control register. I completely missed this before. Number of clock periods inserted between data transactions in master mode. Ha! Huh. Maybe this was what I needed. So this is setting int cs is the interrupt control register. This has been set to a zero, so uh, Right, now we save the old control register value and then we set this. So this is enable set, uh, what was it? PHA poll master. But, but, 
the SPI interface is not actually connected to the outside world because of what we've done here. So PJ, port J, let's just double check that one more time since I have a uh, talent for misreading stuff. Port J. PJ cell. The bits are being set, therefore they are turning into GPIO pins. So the only possible effect this will do is just to push a few bytes through the SPI interface which will then get discarded. But why would you want to do that? Well now we're doing some more stuff with, with PJ. Wish there was a keyboard shortcut for this. So Uh, let me double check again. UN. The bits are being set to zero. F8 means all the bits are set from seven to three, so these three are zero. Uh, this connects the SPI interface up. Uh, the direction is zero to their input. I suppose one of the things I could be doing wrong is not setting them as inputs, because depending on the exact implementation, that could cause them to be if they're set to an output, they could be being driven high, even if the SPI interface is still connected. Uh, what does this mean? The bits control or report the data when cell is high. When the direction bits are high, DX bits control the pins. When they're low, the bits report the signals. The DX bits can be written at any time. Okay, right, what that's meaning is there's an internal latch that contains the output state of each pin. And writing to this register will always update the latch, but the latch may not be connected to the outside world. And likewise, when you read the register, you're not reading the state of the latch, you're reading the state of the pins. So, what was I looking for? PJ Deer. So, we are clearing yeah, we're setting them to inputs. Mozzie, MISO, and SPI clock one to inputs. Then we set this one to an output. Then we raise Mozzie. Where are we? And then we do even more fiddling with port J. Okay. Uh, uh, 
Hang on. All right, the comments appeared above the label. Uh, the direction is, I think that's an output. Output. Um, and minus nine is what the hex F seven. Um, disable pull ups on these, and then we go on to, to port D. So what we've got now is a relatively straightforward setup. Um, however, Mozzie is a GPIO. Okay, I actually think this has got nothing to do with configuring the SD card. I think what this is doing is it's toggling bits in such a way that if the card is an SPIO card and it's gone to sleep due to a power down status, then it wakes up. But... The stuff here we've done with port B has actually just powered the card on. So the card is reset. They're going to have to somehow wake it up. So We've also got this SPI open function, which is doing a bunch of stuff. Oh yeah, this was the thing I was trying to find earlier. Why does it seem to be putting the bus to sleep for both devices? I don't really know. Maybe it's powering, da powering the cards down and then up again later to wake them up? Uh, you can see it doing things like registering the interrupt handler. Uh, what's this? This is trap AO16. Where's my table of traps? AO16 is sysTrap mem pointer size. So if I turn that into a knob. Uh, and now this suddenly we get more stuff here. What's this one? A027. Sistrap mem set. I'm going to bet that this is mem alloc. No, it's not. Uh, A013. Right, this one is Memaloc. This looks promising. So what this is doing is, if this value is, if the, if this variable is null, then we allocate some memory, stash that in the pointer, and configure it. So I'm going to think, I'm going to guess that that is uh, MMC workspace. So. 
Where's our trap? Uh, this is a short way of pushing the value hex 778 onto the stack. So I think that is how big the structure is going to be. So I can rename this to MMC workspace. And I did a bit of type stuff. So yeah, it already knows it's a struct MMC, but I don't know what any of the fields in struct MMC are. So we get to here and we do a bunch of stuff. This is setting up the interrupt handler, more interrupt things, port D, port P. I think these, well, I know that port D is, no, they're all port D. Yeah, that, that is where I think the IO card interrupts go. And then we get to here. Port J, our old friend. So PJ data is lower mozzie miso SBI clock one uh, set CS to output set CS to GPIO uh, and this one is uh, disable pull up on CS. Okay, but we haven't configured any of the other bits. And that's all we've done. But it has called bus asleep. It hasn't called bus awake. So this is this is powering up the bus because it's setting bit five, which is the power pin. And then here, Sorry, no, it's not. This is powering down the bus uh, because the data bit, uh, this line here, is clearing that bit. And then this is just setting it as a GPIO. So, and I'm going to bet that this is turn off card one. And then we get to here. If uh, if we're powered off, if both cards are powered off, then turn off the SPI interface, I bet. Uh, yes, because this is clearing the, yep, yeah, okay, turn off, this is clearing the enable bit. So therefore this piece of code is, yeah, That's disabling the GPIOs. Okay, so that is disabling the SPI bus. So that is doing what I thought it was. And this is just doing it for both buses, one after the other. Yes, uh, the decompilation has figured out the... 
uh, parameters. But that only happens when this is set. Uh, PU var 5 is it's the thing that our memory allocation came up with uh, so I should be able to tell it it's a struct MMC mm. not sure that did what I wanted uh, okay, I think I can do with this one. So this is the MMC workspace. So this is pick, pulling a field out of the MMC workspace and saying You see this if we if we've gone down this code path then we know that there was no workspace previously because I was thinking that what this would be doing is shutting down the MMC work interface if there was previously one that would be why it would be uh, putting the bus to sleep what are these doing Right, the, this is initializing the interrupt system. Then it puts the bus to sleep. I'm confused. Uh, so if this is a zero, that suggests that that's a flag. Well... Uh, where is my data type manager? Let's put that over here. Here is our struct MMC. We know there's a field at address 2, which looks, looks like it's a word. So you see now this becomes a structure lookup. Okay, I don't think that was a word. I think that was a int. So if we go back to here, we can then change this to an int. Okay, and that's now producing much more elegant looking code. Well, if that was at offset two, here this is at a different offset. Oh, right. Uh, this is confused because this offset. Uh, it's expressing in C terms, so this is four lots of MMC workspace. Um, well, we know that the size of the MMC workspace is 778. I'm not sure I know how to... Is this going to work? Wow, that puts in a lot of fields. Okay. Right, but this is now looking up particular fields, which is nice. Uh, can I retype this? 
Undefined int. Wow, that works. I'm impressed. So we don't know what it is, but anyway. So this is a short This is a word. This is uh, a byte, I think. Yep. But it's not really helping us get anything done, I have to say. This does seem to be, this seems to be in initializing the PowerMOS device driver. It's not doing very much to the interface. It's calling this buses asleep thing. And it's doing this. which is configuring CS. But that's about it. Okay, so I don't think that this is actually doing terribly much, but okay, so let's take a look at our code here and see what this is doing. And let's just rephrase this slightly better. So we want to set Uh, we want to set the uh, the SPI function pins to zero, but the chip select line to high. We want Again, we want the function pins to be zero inputs. Where did I put my data sheet? So inputs, but we want the chip select line to be an output. We want No pull up register, no pull up resistors, and we want the bottom three bits to be the SPI interface and the top bit to be chip select. So I think that this is actually the same code that we had before. Now we are going to here, SPI SPC is going to be zero in case for some reason it's not, because we were seeing the wake code do it. SPI bus awake. And we're also going to clear SPI in CS. This is all good practice anyway, to be honest. Okay, SPI cont1, the control register. Uh, data rate unset. Data ready control unset. Mode master enabled. Mm. 
no exchange happening it is idle SS low SS control low phase now I did see the wake code setting the phase high I don't think that makes a difference, to be honest. Well, I'd rather, I think that zero is the right value. Okay, we do need to put SPISPC in. Seven oh eight. Okay, well, let's flash that and see what happens. I'm going to think that nothing will have changed. I also had a sudden thought and I found some better test clips. So maybe we'll get a full set of uh, logic probe. So run, execute. Stop. All right. Well, that didn't work. That's what I expected. But let's see what we are actually getting out. And I've moved all the data lines around, so I'll have to change the names. So this is the clock. This is chip select. So this is these ones will be Mozzie and Miso. I think this one is Mozzie and this one is Miso. Although, could be wrong. Um, actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think this is Mozzie. So I think what we've got here, all these are, all these FFs are the reset sequence. And in fact, we should be able to add the SPI decoder in. And let's see if that comes up with anything useful. The answer is not really. Let me just double check that this is clock, miso, mozzie, chip select. Okay. But we can see Uh, FF, 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 four zero 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 nine five. Uh, that is our code asking the chip to initialize itself, which it then seems to be ignoring. We do see some stuff coming back, but it looks like garbage. Um, I am extremely suspicious about the SD card protocol analyzer. Well, let's give that a try just to see what it does. You can see here it's identified the, the reset command. And it's picked up a reply. of zero, is that right? But I am very curious about this stuff here. Now, if I go look at the actual code, uh, where's SD check? 
So this is the uh, the code that's supposed to actually initialize the card. And what it does is we deassert chip select. So chip select goes high. Then we send 10 bytes. Then we assert chip select. And then we do our initialization. So our logic analyzer isn't showing all of this. And I am thinking about that delay in the code here. This trap is delaying for 20 hex 28 whatevers. 40 somethings, and I don't know what that is. And maybe it's waiting for something to power up. That seems like a plausible option. So uh, So this is the Emutos code for delaying one millisecond. So let's stick a delay for 40 milliseconds, maybe. And let's see what this does, shall we? Uh, reset the board. And right. Okay, so start the analyzer, hit return, still doesn't work. Stop. All right, what did we get? Well, we're still only getting a few bytes here. You see the way that Mozzie comes up from noise to something. This is, makes me think that this is a gradual increment as it powers up. I'm also thinking about that dummy write, well, read and write that was happening here. It This code very carefully turns off the SD card, uh, turns off the SPI. Let me start that again. This code is carefully disconnecting the SPI interface from the bus. Then it pushes a byte through the SPI interface. Then it reconnects it again. Well, chip select is high, unasserted. So let's just push some bytes through and throw them away and see what happens. And we are not in C99 mode, which is honestly the only mode worth using in C. Okay, and let's give this a try. Okay, run, 
run stop. Well, it still didn't work, but what are we getting here? Interesting. Well, here's our go idle. This is exactly the same. We're not getting anything different. Because we haven't set the clock rate. Without the clock rate set, it will go at top speed, which is 8 megahertz, which is far too fast for the 2 megahertz sample rate here to produce. I bet that this weird noise here is it sending the bytes at 8 megahertz and nothing is... Uh, and the, the logic analyzer is just failing completely to uh, detect them. So, we call SPI clock ident here to put the clock into the slow identification mode. And we reset the board and we try it again. Okay, so hit run on the logic analyzer, go. Still doesn't work, but what have we got? Still nothing. I did remember to build it, did I? Yes, I did. So this is setting the exchange bit to start a exchange and it waits for the exchange bit to go away again. So the fact that it's doing this indicates that it is doing something. This is O X O eight. So we are setting chip select. Chip select is high. Do I need a longer delay? Have we actually, like, has this actually been called? execution, run, execute, stop. That's called SPI init lots of times, rather than just once. And we still 
have our weird noise here. But if it's called it multiple times and we go up to one of the retries, let's try to do a command 4a. So command 0, command 4, command 10, command 0, command 10. So the second time through we are getting our 10 dummy bytes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then chip select goes low and it sends the command zero and then we get a one response from the card that's different than the one we were getting before and if you look at the tracing I can actually see Command naught has failed, failed. But we're not seeing the one being received by the code here. Of course, I don't know if this is actually the, the R1 response. And what's it doing next? Then it does a command 10, to which it also replies with a 1. Then command 9. This is actually working. This is talking to the card. The card has just returned garbage for the chip, so the chip data description thing. So it does it again. Keeps doing it. Then we get a command 10. But look, this, you can see here the MISO is slowly crawling up. Okay, uh, so let's delay a whole second and try that. So we power on the card and then we just sit there and wait to, for hopefully the voltage levels to stabilize. All right, now it's possible that the delay isn't working properly because of you know something else I did wrong but so run execute well you can see each batch of work happening And again, miso starts as noisy garbage until the second time through. See, so reset the card, then we get a one. I mean, it does look like the card is talking to us. But here is the first time through, and Uh, 
is go idle state and the response we get back is a zero but the fact that you see MISO normally drifts normally idles high maybe I need to put the delay after I've enabled the SPI interface Um, I'm also interested to know why we're getting SPI initialized being called multiple times. So that's happening in SPI in, it, in here in SDI ch SD check. So SD command appears to be returning as RC what it saw Where's SD command? Here we go So it figures out the length of the command based on the type and for us we're five bytes send a send a byte before the command then we send the command itself then we keep reading bytes until we get a response So we keep reading bytes until we see a byte with the top bit clear. So I would expect the this to be the response here. And it's actually nicely broken down the response for us. So uh, we got a zero which may or may not be natural valid data so this is the you see we send the command we send the CRC we send an end bit uh, sorry the CRC is seven bits so the end bit is the eighth bit of the CRC byte. That's fine. Then we so here's the CRC with the end bit. Stop transmission. Always discard the first byte. But they are a command zero, so we're not doing that. We look, our, we look for the response, we get a byte with the 80 bit clear. You see, I think it's this one. But this code seems to be discarding it. Uh, let me take a look at the Fusix code and see what that's doing. Kernel lib uh, kernel dev dev uh, dev sd. Yeah, here we go. In fact, the init card is in the, the init code is in dev sd discard. So. Here is the code for initializing the drive. SD SPI init. So 
raise CS, set slow clock. This is sending twice as many uh, dummy bytes as we need, which is fine. We send uh, a command and we expect to get a one response. So this does actually seem to be what the card is telling us at least in subsequent transactions. So if we scroll out to three milliseconds, reset the card, we get a one. Uh, and then it starts doing other things. So SD send command, this is in here. Okay. So wait for ready appears to be the stuff here that's sending uh, this stuff here. So send the command packet. So it sends the byte. Then we send the argument, which is four bytes. Then it sends the CRC, which is the last byte. Receive the command response. Skip a stuff byte when stopping reading. Right, we are Uh, I think this code is not doing that. Keep waiting until we see a byte with the top bit clear and then return it. This does not appear to be, this code, the emutos code, does not appear to be skipping the stuff byte. So you can see the same logic here is present, but, emu, uh, but Fusix has disabled the test for uh, command 12. Let's try this. Okay, so prepare to execute. Run, run. Uh, that got some data. That is talking to the card and mostly failing horribly. So what's that? All oh, right, this is uh, this is a complete sector's worth of data in a tooltip. Come on. So what is this doing? Well, we go idle, we skip the stuff byte, we receive a response, which is zero, which I don't think is right, but it seems to be going ahead anyway. We send a command eight, and get a one. We then reset the card again, It does seem a little bit confused. That may be some of my code. So 
So is it was he? So this is the output command four eight zero 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 one AA eight seven stuff byte which we ignore response which here looks like an 08 you see the one bit is set no wait that's us sending this is the response yes that is that is well confused why is it trying to send at the same time it's receiving uh, let's fast forward to the next time round. Right, the decoder is is completely confused now. Great. But here you can see uh four zero 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 nine five we then want to keep reading bytes until we see a response and an f f going out means that we're reading, so we skip the first one and this is the response this is zero zero, which is not valid, so why are we then going away? and doing the command 8. Because it's trying to read the rest of the command. Okay, let's take a look at that Fuzix code again because it's got a nice link to the documentation. Oh, I hate SD cards. You have to go through this nonsense every time you want to bring up a new device. Okay, initialization procedure. So the command zero over CS low. Card sample CS on command low is received successfully. It's SPI mode and responds R1 within idle bit step 01. So how long is a command zero? It's an R1 type. So it returns a single byte. So we've got back an OO. So we are, sorry, um, I said earlier we were response length 5. No, that we're outgoing 5 plus CRC. So we are, in fact, an R1 type, response length 1. So we keep reading bytes until we get a valid response. There are no more bytes to fetch, so we don't do that. We are not an R1B, so we immediately return. Okay, so we should be here. So we should be getting back a zero in RC because that's what it said. Therefore, we should have been seeing this error here, which we weren't. So let's just put
that in. Where is response? I bet that's a pointer to a buffer. Yeah, there it is. And let's also take this stuff out. If it's going to keep calling initialize, then do I need to power off the card, wait a bit and power it on again? Probably, but I don't know why this is calling SD check more than once. Well, it'll do it for each drive, I suppose. No, it won't. Drive has to be zero. ST check is called from in here, actually. Uh. SD in it. See if we need to reinitialize the card after a previous error. Right. That's why it's reinitializing. So, yes, we are going to have to power off the card to reset it. Uh, do we or do we just need to? Ping it with a command zero. Not sure, to be honest. Uh, get disk info. Okay. I feel like we should be powering down the card. Well, that's easily done. Uh, So this needs to be set to that. Uh, these four lines will initialize the power pin, except data is zero. We are now going to pause for a bit, power on the card, pause for a bit. And do I want to put some more tracing in? I think I do. This is... So what this code is doing is it's trying to figure out what kind of card it is because they're always slightly different. So this is the command eight that's appearing over here. But we shouldn't have it shouldn't have actually done that because assuming that the protocol decode for the SPI is correct, which I am not convinced it is, looking at what's coming out of the SD card up here, then um it should be receiving a zero for the response byte and therefore uh, seeing that the card has not gone into idle SBI mode and is therefore failing. Okay, let's try this. This should give us at least a bit more data. All right, start capture, go. Well, that was interesting. Uh, we have been apparently been receiving a come on we did actually receive a reply of one 
this is saying zero. Something here is not match up. So I can see it writing, here's the command zero, stuff byte ignored, zero, R1, zero. Have I successfully connected this to MISO or to something else? I'm uh, just wondering if the logic analyzer is just completely wrong. Uh, the This has got the pin out in it somewhere. There we go. Um, MISO is data out. Hang on, I want this one. Data out, pin 7. Yeah, that should be connected to D1 on the logic analyzer, which... Uh, D1, MISO. So that's peculiar. I'm not entirely convinced by this logic analyzer, to be honest. Uh, however, this does seem to be getting a 1. It then tries to fetch stuff from the... it tries to do a command 8. Sends the CRC, reads a stuff byte, gets back... Wait, why is this now saying it's a 1? when this is ah because i'm looking at this yeah that is indeed a 1 however why have we just sent an 8 that's not right okay where's So what's this doing? SD command stuff byte SBI receive byte is my code. It's here. We are sending an FF. Look, I told it here. That's arriving in the TX register. Uh, sorry, I've lost my logic analyzer. happening I think I know what's happening of course a transmit and a receive both happen at the same time so when a command goes out a command a when a byte goes out a byte comes in always so when we send this for zero, this shows up in the input register. So 
when we send a byte, I think we need to make sure that the receive FIFO is empty because I think what's happening here is that every time every time we send a byte, a byte stash, gets stacked up in the receive FIFO so that when we receive the byte we are not receiving the correct one. In fact, in fact, we've got two functions here, but that's not right. We should have a single send and receive byte, a single send and receive function that pushes out a byte Uh, so this then waits for the exchange to complete. We now know there is a byte in the FIFO waiting because it just got there from here. Therefore, we do this. So sending a byte is uh, send and receive and discard the result. Receiving a byte is send and receive OXFF like that. I think this might produce better or at least different uh, results. Okay, so let us give this a go. Let's see what happens. Uh, ready to execute. Okay, run, execute, stop. Okay, it's still not happy. Let's get that out of the way. But I think it is now less unhappy. Uh, it doesn't look where. Hang on, where are we going? Where is our init code? Is it over here? Okay, I do not believe this decode is valid. Um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it's not valid. It somehow it thinks there are seven bit bytes. I think it's thinking. Yeah, I think it's confused by this glitched clock there. And again, see my earlier comment about expecting to see more dummy bytes with chip select high, which seems peculiar. But uh, command not failed RC equals minus one response equals FF. So Uh, our output byte is four zero. That's our com that's our command. That uh, also does not look like a four zero. It's most significant bit first. So uh so this would be bit zero, bit one, so zero, one, zero, 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 zero. Let's 
go and find the next command where hopefully it should be in sync again. Hang on, what's happening here? Oh, right, it's given up and tried again, so we should have a resync. Here are our 10 dummy bytes. Four. 4095 uh yeah 4000095 then we get a ff which is our stuff byte sorry we we send an ff and receive a 3f and then we get back a actual response which looks valid that's a 1 then we do our command 8, and this time it's actually the protocol analyzer has actually found it, and we get back a 1. Then we do a A command 41 and get back a 1. This is a valid conversation. Uh, command 55 is, is a shift, it means the next command is a different command. They ran out of opcodes. Yes. Yes. It does seem to be doing this several times. Yeah, um it's got it <laughs> it's got itself into quite a loop and eventually it just gives up. That is at least better. Okay, um, I'm going to change this to a 20 to match uh, Fuzix. So yeah, here you can see command zero, RC equals one. And then it seems to have successfully fetched the card info. Card type, card version, card features, two, two, three. Okay, I'm going to have to find more documentation for this, uh, but I think those look right. So I assume it's getting into SPI. Now that changes the clock speed. Ah, uh, this type here is what kind of type? what kind of card it is. So type 2 is SD. Right, it's actually figured out it's an SD card. So this does look like it has correctly initialized the card. Uh, this is it changing the clock speed. I think in the interests of debugging, let's just not do that. It may be that this is too fast for it, which I doubt. 8 megahertz is quite slow for a SD card, at least in my experience. However, we are going to... Uh, Who's going? Who calls SD read? SDRW. Who calls SDRW? I'm looking for block device. Here we go. I'm looking for block device tracing. Yeah, that's better. 
that's what we want. So let's turn this on and try this. Okay, so it's our execute command line, run, go, right, what's this done? Well, it's figured out it's a disk, and then it's, it seems to be re-initing, oh, I'll stop that, it seems to be reinitializing the card a lot. So what do we got here? Command naught, go idle. Response one, correct. Command eight. Uh, protocol analyzer does not seem to have spotted a response. So it's waiting for a, a, a return byte with zero in the top bit. And here it is, seven, seven. Um, wait, we've sent a seven, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, chip select is high. Yeah, it's just given up and has reset the, it's resetting the card. But why? Here are our 10 init bytes. Command zero. Command 8, which is a 48, the command, send I interface condition, check voltage range, and it returns a R7 response. Uh, the R3, R7 response, which is an R1, a status byte plus trailing 32-bit data. So we then send the four bytes of argument. Then you get the CRC. And then we want to wait until we get something back. So I would assume that this this is the stuff byte we ignore. Then we wait for a response. Then we get a 32-bit trailing response. But then what would this be? Okay, so when is this calling command eight? Here. Command eight, one AA, Uh, followed by an 87. That is what we're seeing, isn't it? Yes, it is. And it is an R7, which means it's the five byte response and the response byte. So R7, it is indeed a response length of 5. SD command timeout is, this is the number of bytes it waits, is 8. I think that is way too short. What does Fuzix do? Uh, okay, send the command. So this is waiting for 20 bytes. Uh, 
And I also think that I'm going to, wherever the SD command has gone, here we go. I am going to dump the response. Like so. Okay. All right. Run, go. And stop. Uh, I should probably dump the uh, the output command as well, just to be sure that this is behaving sensibly. So reset command and a one. Then we have a longer pause than usual, which is prob almost certainly due to printing this message here. Then we get a command one. Send HCS info and didn't we get a command eight last time? Round one, reset. Uh, chip select is down. Shouldn't chip select be going up between commands? Sure that any deferred rights have finished. Yes, it should be going up between commands. So SD card type is also doing a command. Hang on, I will actually I'm going to have I'm going to have to rework this I think So looking at the Fusix code here when we want to transfer a sector, either in or out, we send a command 17 or a command 24. Uh, and then we send or receive the data. So I think the SD send command function, yeah, is we lower CS, we do the command, Ah, and we leave CS asserted. Release here raises CS. Yeah, 
I am going to have to rework all of this. I'm not sure how this ever works, to be honest. Correct, we want to get rid of that. Okay, so we need a yeah, Boolean. Do we have uh? Do we have Boolean types? Apparently we do. And we're just going to copy uh, release from Fusix. So this is going to I can't remember what the what this thing is called. Uh, SPI receive a byte. Okay. So. We're actually going to leave, if we look at the physics code, raise doesn't happen very often. It happens at the beginning of a command. So where is, here we go, command. Ensures uh, at least one byte is clocked out before sending the command. Cleans up any residual data that the command might be sending. Well, SD wait for ready. What does this do? Yep, that's the code here. So I think that is okay. And we now want to uh, to go with release. We're also going to want Call this something else to be honest. And So there should be 
one place where lower CS is called, which happens in send command, and several places where release is called. Uh, this is some physics code to allow writes to complete in the background, makes things slightly faster. So we're doing a release immediately after a read. So I think we want... Here we go, so we do a read, we could do the command, we receive the data, and let's do that. And... Hang on, is that the right? Yeah, okay, that, we do want to do that. Uh, this is doing the right thing. Okay. Right, what this should be doing here is waiting for the write to complete. Uh, in physics, this happens in the background, which happen so that only when chip select needs to be released do we actually check to make sure the write succeeded. Uh, however, I believe that will be happening in SD send data in this code. Yeah, so that's good, we can do that. So does this build? It does not. Oh, we need prototypes. I guess we will be calling SD assert, not uh, CS assert. So we want SD command. like so. give this a try and see what happens. Okay, so run, go. Well, it still isn't working. And getting that card info didn't work. We should see CS go up and down now, which we are. So, what have we got? Go idle state response R1, which is correct. Go idle state. Why is it doing that? So we have it's done the command, and I can see the response come back, which is a 1. I think it may then be trying to do the card info, except it never actually gets as far as sending a command. Chip select stays down until after all the serial stuff happens. 
uh, goes up, goes down. And we should see one dummy byte go out. This, these clocks look very bad. No, this is spurious. This isn't a real command. You can look and see the argument here and the CRC is wrong. Uh, the analyzer is confused. Okay, let's dump the command. So command argument so determine card type and function so this calls SD command command 8 and gets back a response then looks at the response What does SD wait for not idle do? Right, this this sends a command. So uh, that will deassert chip select. do we see here? Request card info uh, card reset to which we get back a 01 response which is correct. Then over here we do a command 8 to which we get back a 3.7 that doesn't look quite right to me but here we can see that the transfer then we get lots of F's and then eventually we time out how many F's are there? Probably 20. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Because of course there's the stuffing bite first. Well, and I'm willing to bet that this No, wait, this is an output. Uh, uh, 
yeah, I'm willing to bet that what we're seeing here is the response. So the 77 is the response byte. So parameter error, address error, array sequence error, no command CRC, illegal command, array state in idle state. Uh, that doesn't seem quite right to me, but that does look like a response. It may be upset by toggling CS there. So... So, run and go. Fabulous. So it's sending the the command eight. Well, it's sending the O eight request whatever that is. So here we see it go idle. End of command, chip select goes up, chip select goes down. Uh, here are the dummy bits that go go out when chip select is up. Is that correct or should they be should they happen when chip select is down again? Release, lower. Okay, release, raises CS and then sends eight clocks. Then we lower CS. And I think we should now be Oh yes, we are. We are wait. Here is the uh, the FF going out, which is happening here. So this is the same. We're doing the same thing in Emutos as Fusix is. So then there's a pause while we dump the request to the console. Then we dump. Lots of FFs, that doesn't look right. Then we toggle CS, oh right, um, I think my SD command is balked. So wait for ready is supposed to be Okay, it spins waiting for um until we get something that's not an FF. Right, so what does SD SBI wait do on physics? So there's two versions of this. One is it wanting an FF, the other is it not wanting an FF, or it's wanting something that's not an FF. And we do want an FF. Right, that's why it's failing. It's reading, this is spinning, waiting for something that's... This is spinning, waiting for an FF. This is spinning, waiting for an FF, and then it returns the byte it read. So yeah, I think that is fine.
So we then send the request. You can see that happening here. But I don't think it's ever showing up. So is the request just disappearing off into the ether? I would expect that well, it's printed out the request line, therefore it should be calling SPI send byte. Therefore, I would definitely expect something to be coming out. So, unless... The f Yeah, um, don't know how that could be failing then. Okay. Well, that seems to have failed quite a lot. And always on line 547 here. So it sent the data and not received a response. Well, what are we getting here? Command 0. Now we get a command 8. Fantastic. Uh, followed by lots and lots of Fs. So I think this is our 200, to be honest. Until eventually we give up and raise CS. Well, the card is accepting the reset. We can see that happening there. Which makes me think that Right, CS is going high, but then we're not getting our pad bits. Uh, Fuzix's release always does a receive byte, so we are always doing a receive byte. So for so here CS is going high, but then we're not getting a transfer. Are there any other places where unassert is being called? our init code and that is it 
So what will be happening is that this unassert is a call to uh, SPI init, which raises the, well, which power cycles the card. Uh, how long is this? Not long. So that's not long enough for either of these. I think what's happening is that it thinks it's sending the command here, but then nothing is coming back from the card and it keeps spinning indefinitely until it gives up and tries again. That suggests that uh, something's not right here. Hang on a minute. This is after the command. This is after the reset. Also, why are we sending an O1 here? We should be sending an FF. I am now actually wondering whether this is also invalid and the card is not accepting the yeah me mozzie and miso seem to be the same throughout you're gonna laugh my two probes are touching each other one moment Okay, so so I jostled the board, and the what I've done is I've clipped two things onto the pins connecting the SD card connector to the motherboard. So I'm not actually t uh, connecting anything to the SD card pins themselves, but the ends are bare and they must have shifted and touched each other. Well, at least we don't have to download it again. Run, execute. Look, look, it found the partition table. It's talking to the board. Finally, finally, finally. Oh, okay. Um, so let's take out some of the debugging. worth keeping that's not that's worth keeping these aren't
Okay, so let's turn that off. Let's build and rerun. I'll be very glad to put the lid back on this thing and remove the logic analyzer. And we write. Okay. Uh, set this up. Right. Run. Execute. And it's found the MBR, but there are no uh, partitions here yet. But that does look like it's working. Finally. So if we go look here at commands replies, yes, 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 this all looks normal. Uh, it does seem to be calling this one quite a lot. Uh, E command forty one. Oh, right, it's looping here, waiting for the card to wake up, which happens here. So this is returning a 1, 5, 5, oh, 1, 4, 1, 0, 0. OK. Then we do the 5, 8. What's a 5, 8? read OCR command 10 is send the card ID I'd expect to be something after that and there's a pause while it thinks send CSD and then we do get a big block of data which is nice uh, oh, and here is command 17 read single block and there this green thing is our very first sector of our own and it's the partition table and then nothing else happens because there are no uh, Atari partitions on this card. Right, well, that took forever and I am not entirely convinced of... Oh, I need to do this. I need to test this first. I'm not entirely convinced that my changes to the SD card stuff, the SD card logic is right. But it's, it is very suspicious that it's not uh, twiddling CS between commands because I'm pretty sure that the card needs it. Uh, SD cards are picky as all hell and it's possible whoever wrote the original code for, the, for Emutos simply had a card that was a bit more easygoing than mine but you do have to do everything right and I trust the Fusix code because that seems pretty solid in my experience uh, plus uh, doing lazy releases of chip select allows you to do things like uh, do deferred writes, where the write to the card, you send the data to the card and the card thinks about it as it erases a sector and programs a sector if necessary. 
before the write finally completes. And if you can do that in the background while your program is continuing to run, that's a good thing. Okay, so execute. Uh, no errors. Interesting that we're no longer getting the drive A message, but um, I think I will. I'm sure I got we got a different message last time. This. Interesting. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm going to leave those disabled for now. I'm going to check all this stuff in. Let me just quickly scan the divs. This is the Dana code. And I think this can go down to, let's call it 20. These subroutines should be renamed to something a little bit more consistent. That can happen next time. That can be clean. Okay, so fantastic. Okay, so next time I will have made myself a card with an actual Atari partition on it and uh, put the lid back on my computer. Uh, and hopefully we should be able to get the CLI running. And then we can start on the interesting bit, which is to get the screen and the graphics system up and running. And that should allow us to see the console on the screen and possibly even see gem start if we're really, really lucky. We won't be able to interact with it as there's no keyboard interface or touchscreen interface, but it will be nice to see nevertheless. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments.